uh, growing up on the farm was wonderful. Uh, I think we were poor, but we didn't know we were poor. There was so much love in that house and, and caring, and uh, everyone really was so good to each other. And uh, it was a, a home with a lot of faith. Uh, it was a good life. It was a great place to raise kids on a farm. Well, it gave me a lot of stability of love and, and faith and things that are going to happen. I went to Philadelphia and I was in fourth grade. We lived in, the, my stepfather got an apartment in the center of the city. When I was um, 19, I wanted to leave home and I came to New Jersey. I worked at a hardware store in Perth Amboy and uh, I met my husband Ed there. Uh, he was a salesman and he sold linoleum to the store and I was a bookkeeper and I gave him his checks when he came in and that's how we met. I always thought he was nice looking and, and very quick and witty. Um, I was always a happy guy and one time I was coming back from the library on my lunch hour and I was just ready to go into the store and he had been there and was just coming out of the store. And uh, I said, hello, and he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to talk to you. He says, um, are you doing anything for dinner tonight? And I said, no, actually I'm not. I said, actually I just broke up with somebody yesterday, so you're lucky, laughingly. But anyway, uh, we went to dinner that night and uh, he took me to the Molly Pitcher Hotel. He was so suave and so uh, well-dressed and well-mannered and I was so impressed that when I got back home and that night, um, I wasn't gonna let him kiss me goodnight because nice girls didn't do that on the first date. But uh, lover boy, he looked up at the sky and he said, oh, look at that moon. And when I looked up, he kissed me before I knew what was happening. So, and our life was happy like that all the way to the end. But um, I didn't see him for two years. And I, I heard him coming to the office and my heart would beat on the outside of my blouse every time I heard his voice say hello to my boss because I really felt so much love for him. And uh, then after two years, March to March, two years later, I was on the way out the front door and my, my boss asked me to take a letter last minute and I had to catch a bus to go to Perth Amboy to get a train to Philadelphia where I had a date. And I missed the bus. As I came out the door, I saw the tail end of the bus go, and I was, I guess, cursing softly under my breath. And uh, I heard somebody say, do you want a ride? And I looked, and it was Ed, and he rolled down the car window. And I said, oh, you don't even know where I live now. And he said, that doesn't matter. Get in. <laughs> and I got in, and on the way to, to taking me home, he said, uh, um, I really missed you so much. And I said, yeah, I'm sure. And I'm looking out the window because I couldn't even look at him. And he said, uh, what do I have to do? Put a ring on your finger to prove it? And I just said something very stupid. I couldn't think of anything. I was so thrilled. And I said, oh, I'll put a ring in your nose, thinking of the bull, I guess. The <laughs> but anyway, he laughed. And uh, he asked me if he could take me out that night. And I said, no. I said, I'm going to Philadelphia. He said, I'll drive you there. What time do you want to go? And I said, well, no, I'm going on the train and I have a date at the end of the train. And he said, okay. He said, how about Monday night? That was Friday. And uh, I said, that Monday night's okay. He said, all right, I'll pick you up for dinner Monday. And he did, and he took me to dinner and he started telling me all about his background and his financial worth. and. Then he took a pen out and he started scribbling on this white tablecloth in the restaurant of how much he had to offer. And, uh, and I'm looking like I'm in a daze. I can't believe that he's like, yes, two weeks ago we weren't talking and now he's proposing, more or less. When he took me back to drop me off, he said, how about if I throw away my little black book and you throw away yours? And I said, yeah, that's agreeable. From there, he um, after we ate, he excused us. He wanted to take me for a ride to see some of the area and the shore. And he took me to uh, Spring Lake, to um, St. Catherine's Church, a very pretty church in Spring Lake on the lake. 
and uh, he kissed me and he said, do you think September would be a good month to be married in? And I said, you mean you and me? And he said, well, who do you think I mean? <laughs> I said, and I kissed him and I said, any month would be a good month, Ed. So anyway, we got married on August 22nd and began a wonderful life together. 57 years we were married and every day was wonderful with him. We wanted four children. We wanted two boys and two girls and we had four children in five years, just like we planned, and we raised them all together. He was always very reasonable and logical, and I was kind and sweet to the kids, and he gave that end. But it was, it was good, a good life, and the children all feel like they had a very good life with us. That was my life's goal, was to be a good wife and a good mother. And that was fulfilling to me with the children and to see them progress and do good in school and have nice friends. And, and they were very caring about each other. It really worked out well. My grandparents showed a lot of faith in our home and Ed and I did the same. Um, we tried to see that they got to church on Sundays and, and learned all about God and that God is, and that's all there is. And uh, they were, they grew up in a good faith. And we always made a big thing out of birthdays in our home. And uh, because that's the day you came into this world and it's a very important day to remember. And we always went all out with, for the kids and for each other with special gifts and special things on their birthday. So I had all four children in five years but um, we didn't have to go back to work, so I stayed home for 20 years and raised the children. I was here for them. And uh, when we got married, he always said, the outside is mine and the inside is yours. You take care of the household things and I'll take care of all the stuff, the repairs and the yard work and things. And it worked out. We always seemed to have a plan. I learned to be a good baker because I wanted to give the children something good when they came home from school. I wanted my house to smell good. I wanted it to be good surroundings when they came in out of the snow blizzards or the hurricanes or whatever we had. So I always wanted to make dishes that made my children happy. And, and when I lived with my aunt and uncle in Perth Amboy, <clears throat> he liked a midnight snack and I always made him sandwiches and he used to say, you make the best sandwiches. You know, when people compliment you constantly, it gives you courage to do even better. But it turned out to be chocolate cake was the favorite of everybody. Um, actually, they, they were box cakes, but made with TLC. And then the icing was uh, made with cocoa from scratch. And that was the best part of the cake. That's, that's why the cake is so good. It's not the batter, it's the icing. But anyway, I got a reputation for doing that in church and my circles and my friends. I couldn't tell you how many chocolate cakes I've made. When John was a junior in high school, um, I visited my girlfriend on her birthday and took her a cake. And she worked um, in the town, um, in, the, in the high school as a secretary. But next door to her was a realtor. And she came over for lunch and she said they needed somebody in the real estate office to do secretarial work. And uh, that was on a Friday. And uh, by the time I got home, I had a telephone call asking me, could I start Monday? And I, and I hung up the phone and I said, oh my God, I got the job now, what am I gonna do? You know, <laughs> I was so shy, but I was very ambitious and I was very conscious of, of what was needed to be done. And uh, they gave me uh, an hour for lunch. I was back in that office within the half hour to finish up something that I was doing. I, I just, I loved being there. I loved all the people I worked with. And uh, I was just a secretary for two years. But I came home and I said to Ed and Stephen, I have to go to real estate school and I, I'm scared to death. I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. And they said, both of them said, we'll go with you good harmony in the home, really, and support. So all three of us went to real estate school together. I sold a lot of houses and I loved it. I, 
always loved doing jigsaw puzzles. And I said, to sell a house is just like a jigsaw puzzle. The customer comes in, you got the piece in your hand, and they tell you what they want, and you try and think of where it goes, and you take them there, and they say, I love it. And the husband said, don't say that in front of the realtor. Then now we can't negotiate. But anyway, uh, I had a good personality for doing that type of work because I really did enjoy it. I belonged to the Million Dollar Club eight years in a row that I sold more than a million dollars worth of homes. Unfortunately, I didn't make a million dollars, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And I worked there for 25 years. I retired when I was 73. So, and I enjoyed every minute of it. I was a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts are always prepared. <laughs> and I learned that in Baltimore when I was 12 years old. I became a Girl Scout then. And my husband, Ed, was a Boy Scout and a Scout Master till he went in the service uh, with the World War II. He earned a lot of honors and medals then. He had 89 missions to his credit in the Air Force. And uh, he was very brave to do things like that. And he said the Air Force and um, Boy Scouts taught him so many wonderful things to make his life better. And, and I'm sure that was true. He loved digging in the yard and he loved growing dahlias was his favorite flower. And he, he could grow dahlias as big as dinner plates. And that's no exaggeration. And I used to take him when I was in real estate, he would give me a bouquet for the office and no one could believe that they were grown in his yard. He was so proud of them. He took a lot of care with everything that he did. Gave his boyfriend, Jimmy Silver, and I'm still good friends with his wife today. Was, uh, he gave him a book and the poem, one of the poems in there was, you can if you think you can. And Ed printed it out and all our kids learned it by heart. Every one of them knows every word of that poem because the poem says, you can if you think you can, and if you think you can't, you won't. It just won't happen. So thinking positive is just a really major thing. And it's always been a major thing in their lives. Each one of them has such wonderful qualities of being good to others and doing the right thing. And it's because Ed and I tried to teach them that way in our home. When I had my children, I always kept them spotless. And, I, and they were beautiful kids. I used to take them for walks downtown if I needed something at the store. I'd have two in the stroller and one holding on each side. It took me about an hour to get them ready to walk down to the store. But I used to get so many compliments from mostly older people, elderly, would say, oh, those children are so beautiful. And my heart would just swell because I felt they were like that. And I used to polish, they had the little white shoes and I used to polish their shoes every night and put them on the kitchen sink. And I was so proud to add another little pair each year because I had the four and five years. Ed always sold the best. If they ran any contest, he won them. It's like putting the carrot before the rabbit's nose. I mean, he had to win or die. I mean, he had that enthusiasm and the know-how. But um, he planned this trip for us to go to California for a month with the children. And all my friends said, what are you taking the kids for? You, you know, you got a chance to get away. I said, no, we want to take them with us. So we hooked our car onto a trailer. The trailer was brand new. I think it was $100 a week. And all winter, he went down the basement on the ping pong table and planned that trip. He wrote to all the different mayors and all the different cities, what's there to do when we get there? You know, at that time, he knew the exact dates we were getting there. He was so efficient with it all. But we got a lot of good lectures in <laughs> on that trip as parents. But anyway, the, the kids were good. And uh, Yellowstone Park was most enjoyable. Yeah, and would you know, uh, Miss, Miss Clean here, I took the ironing board and it didn't fit anywhere because it wouldn't go under the bunks. So when anybody got out of the shower, we put it in the shower. When you want to take a shower, we took the ironing board out first. <laughs> well, I love getting together with my family because that's the beginning of all of us is, 
being together when we were children and then growing together. And I don't know, I'm always surrounded by people and by people that I love and love me in return. And I'm so grateful for that. And there isn't anything I wouldn't do for any of them that asked me if it was important to them. I would break my neck to do it. And Ed was always compatible to that too. I really think the good Lord guided Ed and I together in Perth Amboy. I often said that a little farm boy in Schenectady on the water and a little farm girl in the mountains of West Virginia, how did we end up in Perth Amboy on the same sidewalk to end up together in life? It had to be a plan. I think I lived a wonderful life. God has been so good to me, I, I really can't think of anything I would have wanted to change. For me, I, I want for nothing. I tell the children, you, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I have to believe that because I can't think of anything that I want that I don't have.